Hey guys, we're Cesar and Pam with CesarandPam.com. You can live the life you dreamed of, a life. Of freedom. <laughs> okay, we're so used to saying it in Spanish that Pam was telling me that it's hard for her. To for remember. <laughs> <laughs> so hey guys, thanks for logging in today. We're gonna, we just finished our Spanish uh, Facebook Live in Zoom. And uh, thank you to all of, the, all of you who are watching this recording. Uh, remember, uh, we, uh, our saying, our slogan of you can live the life you dreamed of, a life of freedom, means that you, freedom in every area of your life is by becoming a good steward of what, all the resources that God has given you. Uh, many of you who follow us on different channels here in Europe and in the U.S., well, they're in Europe and here in the U.S., uh, it's because you have a, an online business from home, and one of those important areas is the area of relationships. Actually, the most important relationship God has given us is our marriage. And maybe if you're watching this, you may not even believe in God. Maybe you're like, what are you talking about when you mention God and when you mention marriage? Not only I don't believe in, in God, but I don't believe in marriage. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. I'm going to create a, a playlist in our YouTube channel uh, called God. And I have one in my Spanish one, but I have to duplicate it in the English channel to help you think through that. Why do you not believe in God? If you don't believe in God, just a quick intro, because we are going to mention a lot of what it means to be married and how to solve relationships if you do believe in God and a creator that created marriage. But if you don't, I want you to think about a couple, four things, four points, one concept, four points. If you don't believe in God, you don't, you don't have an answer for the four most basic questions that everyone has. Number one is origin. Where do I come from? How did I get here? Am I just a product of random chance? Number two, um, how do I know what's right and what's wrong? Morality. Who tells me that being married or not married, uh, it's correct. If there's no God who created the rules. Number three, significance. Why am I here? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? If somebody put me here, why? And number four, destiny. Where am I going? So I want you to analyze that because if you believe that there's a God, there's definitely a, a, a purpose for your life and a purpose in your marriage. And let's start right there because um, we've been having conversations with different people from different countries who have uh, been asking us about their situation. I mean, marriage is a complicated problem. Why? Because we are different. Male and female. The Bible says that God created us in his image and likeness. Male and female. We actually reflect who God is in our male and female characteristics. I remember I had a, I have a friend that used to say that, oh, my wife, man, we're not compatible. I love, she doesn't like sports. I love hunting. And he started talking about all these things. And then he told me that he talked to another friend of his who told him, wait, you don't, you don't need a woman. You're looking for a, for a dude with booze. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody who likes exactly what you like. When people say we're not compatible, of course you're not compatible. You're completely different. The idea is to become one. That's going to be the principle number one that we're going to share with you. But the reason why we have problems is because we are different. And because we are selfish. Can you interrupt me, honey? Uh, if, well, I just I just got to. a picture because out there in the other room, the boys are doing a puzzle. And I was thinking that about being fitting mm. together. You know, it is like a puzzle. <laughs> you know, you're finding the pieces and how they fit together. Like, I'm like this and he's like that. How can that, how can we, how can we fit that together? You know, but if we have a picture and that's what God gives, a picture of what we're trying to accomplish, then we can look at those individual pieces and see how they fit and how they go together. So. Yeah, yeah. So the people that have been contacting us that we've been having conversations with, they always say something that is very common to us because we had so many problems in our marriage for a long time, and most of them were my fault. But it's always... She is like this, and she does this to me, and she has never supported me, and she's never believed in me, and she is very controlling, blah, blah, blah. And then on her side, what do women typically say, honey? Um, he's egotistical. He only thinks about himself. He always tries to control everything. Um, it's all about him. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. 
Yeah. I guess I said the same thing. I've been there. I mean, so what's a complaint? The other person is not perfect, right? They're both saying that. Well, if you have an expectation of perfection, you're both going to fail. We both have failed before. And in our marriage, I mean, um, we've had many problems that, that uh, many of them, it was obvious that it was my fault, but there were ways in which you also contributed to that, that nobody yeah. actually made yeah. saw. <laughs> no, we were telling our boys, I don't know how this came up. I think we were talking about the movie Braveheart. <laughs> and I remember when we were just, re, you know, had gotten married, we lived in Mexico and we had a little apartment and says, I love that movie. Braveheart and at the um, like blockbuster place, you know, they had one of those big life size um, Braveheart posters where it was like a standing big head, uh, uh, William Wallace. Well, yeah, yeah, but the, the Is, actor. Oh, um, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Okay, so there's Mel Gibson, you know, the big poster. So we were, so I, went into one, I went into one of those places one in Mexico and Guadalajara, Mexico. When we still lived there, and I saw it, I went to rent a movie. I'm like, oh, this is before Netflix, people. So, and I had to look, man, what do you do when you don't need them anymore? And after the movie, you know, goes, is no longer a popular. Like, oh, we get rid of them, we throw them away. I'm like, could you please tell me when you're going to throw it away? I'll go pick it up. So I picked it up, they gave it to me, and I got to our apartment, and I, I came in, and Pam was like, what is that piece of trash? <laughs> I didn't want that in our bedroom, I and mean, that's where it was. I think well, it wasn't our bedroom, it was like a little office we had. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, remember? It's like, okay, so you walked in, it was the kids' bedroom, then it was our bedroom, and then to the to the left was the little TV room that we had. That's what it was. But anyway, go ahead and tell the story. Anyway, so, you know, if you know Cesar and I, I'm nice. <laughs> I, most people think of me as being more, you know, soft-spoken and... Because, okay, because we have different temperaments, right? <laughs> yeah. So her temperament, if you're familiar with the colors, or she's more yellow-green or more phlegmatic melancholy or if you use the enneagram you are more you're number one you want to do what's right right then i am red blue or i'm choleric sanguine or i am number three right so i'm more explosive i'm more emotional and so when we fought it looked like it was always my fault he always but, looks like the bad guy really but i knew i mean we were in the crazy cycle if you're familiar with the crazy cycle mm -hmm. because as a woman, I wanted to feel loved, and as a man, he wanted respect. And so I would withhold respect, and he would withhold love. And so it was, it was ugly. Our fights were really bad, you know. And they would usually end when I was just really sobbing, hurt, and you feel so finally bad <laughs> that he would repent, you know, and change. But in one of our fights, I remember like he did something and it hurt you know and i was angry and frustrated and hurt and i saw that william wallace and i ripped it <laughs> and i remember right before i did it like am i really gonna do this but it was like inside me i just wanted him to know this is how you hurt me like you i'm gonna hurt you the way you hurt me <laughs> like i knew that would get him you know and our kids couldn't believe that I think they were kind of like, yeah, mom, you know, <laughs> you were able to fight back, but. So, um, so here are the three principles, because we only have like 30 minutes, right? Uh, principle number one for two imperfect people is to understand that God created us to be one. So a relationship, husband, wife, and that's why you should be married, not just living together. But you should be one where everything you have everything in common finances, communicate everything with each other, because that is the way to create true unity. I mean, have you ever uh, seen a, a team, a sports team where everything is flowing and there's momentum happening? Why? Because they're all moving as one, right? Or maybe you do have a business, you have a network marketing business, and there are those times where momentum is building and things are growing, or you have a traditional business and everybody's communicating well, and everybody's going after the, going this, after the same goal, and everybody does their role well, and things are moving and progressing, and they move as one. That is what God wanted to do. Actually, when he created us in his image and likeness, we both reflect different aspects of him. And it's because we are, not because we're the same, but because we are different. I mean, think about even physically, anatomically, in the sexual act. We are different. 
but we fit perfectly because we're supposed to uh, become better. That's why God created marriage to, so that we will work in our character. And that's going to be point number two. But if we come and become one, that is the goal. Anything to say about that? Or? Yeah, just, and it kind of goes into number two, but if you change, your marriage will change. I wrote that, that down in a marriage conference we went to mm -hmm. by Jimmy and Karen Evans. If you change, your marriage will change. And most of the time, like the, the people reaching out to us are saying, the other person needs to change. And they see that, what the other person needs to change. But you can't change the other person. you got to look at yourself and think, how can I change? So it's not a 50-50. It's 100%, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I told this dear friend of ours who's having problems in, in your marriage, told her, you have to just give it all. And here's a concept. For those of you who don't believe in, in, in God, let me explain to you, or you don't know how um, the Bible, what the Bible is all about. Let me explain to you what basically the Bible message is. God created us to have a loving relationship with us. He didn't create us so that we would glorify him, as some people say. I said, God has a low self-esteem problem and we need, he needs to create a small being to tell him how awesome he is. No, he created us so that we would have a loving relationship with him and we chose to live for ourselves. But God wanted to rescue us because the Bible says that if you live for yourself, you will die eternally. You're, you're choosing to live separate from God for the rest of eternity. Your soul is eternal. It will not die. So God does not want that. So what did he do? The Bible says that even though we were yet sinners, he died for us. And because God is, God is a loving father, but he's also a righteous judge. So he knew that he had to implement the consequences to the people who chose to live for themselves. But he didn't want us to die. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that whoever believes in him and restores their relationship with him, it doesn't perish, but you can have eternal life. So God sent his son, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the person of Jesus came to die for us, taking our sin upon himself on that cross so that he can righteously forgive us if we come back to him. The same sacrifice that he did for us, that he made for us, this is what he's asking us to do within marriage. Yeah, I know, and I think it's incredible to think that what God is offering us is that we can be one with him. Jesus said mm -hmm. to his disciples, I want you, I want us to be one, just as my father and I are one, and that we can have that relationship with Christ, with our father, God. You know, it's knowing how much he loves us. He laid down his life, and then we respond to that, and we, we want to lay down our lives, and we want to be one. We want to have the same goal the same I, I love your analogy the team you know and everybody doesn't have the same strengths or weaknesses but it when you're working together i mean you can advance and you can do something so amazing and that's what god wants for for us as believers and for us as couples like we have a job to do and we can't do it if we're just focused on ourselves we gotta um or focus on the other person we gotta focus on what we can change about ourselves yes. well, yeah, so the Bible says that God hates divorce because it's the ultimate surrender of giving up, giving up, like there's no hope. However, if God has hope for us until we die, trying to rescue us, to break through our hardened heart so that we will reconcile with him, what makes us believe that there's no hope between two human beings? There is always hope. And as we were talking, honey, a few minutes ago, if you're in a situation in your marriage where there's abuse, you need to contact the authorities, but don't give up yeah. on that marriage yet. Uh, I have a, somebody in our team in South America was having a situation where she was living with this guy. They were not married, but then she got pregnant and then he left. And now she has like a two or three year old and they don't live with each other but the guy comes at night sometimes he comes drunk and he takes the kid to his family's and she's left there crying and praying and wondering what's going on she was asking him what to do i told her honey you need to call the police and you need to get an attorney to find out what your rights are to protect your child and to protect yourself from that situation number one but number two and i say this with complete um 
humility, knowing that I've never been through something like this. I've never been um, the object of abuse in a relationship. Um, but what I believe from what the scripture says, you need to pray for him, be praying for him and be hoping that your relationship can be reconciled. Even if they put him in jail, you go visit him in jail and tell him, honey, I am praying for you. Because I believe that if, if, you, were, if, if you are married, that there is hope for reconciliation. Yeah. Well, I think that makes me think of the scripture in Colossians 3. And what we're talking about, if you don't have a relationship with God, it's, it sounds impossible and doesn't make sense. And I get that. But when we know that we are loved and we are accepted, that we're, we're Christ's beloved ones, you know, and we have that relationship with him, then we can act differently. And Colossians 3, 3 verse 12 says, Therefore, as God's holy people, chosen and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And over all these, well, bearing with each other and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So it's, it's because of what we've received, you know, that we are able to, to give it. I'm, I tell my kids, you know, did you get dressed this morning? Did you clothe yourself? When I hear them bickering, did you get dressed? Did you clothe yourself with com compassion today, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and patience? Are you going to bear with each other? You know, are you going to forgive those grievances? Or do you always want to get back at the other person? And um, God wants us to put on love you know, mm -hmm. and walk in love. And love means preferring the other person, choosing what's best for them. So you have problems in your marriage, in your relationship, it's normal. Yes, we all do. Solution number, and step number one in that solution is to realize that the goal is to become one, is to be married for the rest of your life and have everything in common, 100%, 100%. Number two, die to yourself. Die to yourself, prefer the other person. And actually, uh, we heard this at the marriage conference we went to, the more dominant partner should lay down their life first. And I have to say, I have to acknowledge my weakness that in most of our marriage, Pam was the one taking the initiative of dying first until I realized God started showing me the hardness of my heart and the weakness of my character. But that's what you need to do, die. And then number three, seek coaching. Why? Because you need somebody to tell you, if you have a booger hanging off your nose, you need somebody to tell you, hey man, you may not like it, but it's, but you will thank the person who told you. You need to have somebody who can be objective and tell you what you cannot see in yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's super important. I think men need accountability. Women need accountability. Um, it, you don't need to be your husband's accountant. I mean, you are his accountability, but you want, you don't want to be the one nagging him and telling him about the boogers. <laughs> you know, let somebody else point some of those things out and pray, you know, the Holy Spirit will show them mm -hmm. and reveal things to them too. If you, if you don't see that happening, if your husband's not seeking that out, you can pray and the Holy Spirit will, um, speak to them, you know, yeah. but, but yeah, get some counseling, get some coaching, have a mentor for your, for yourself, for your relationship, for your marriage. Yeah. I was just uh, listening to some audios the other day, yesterday or the day before yesterday about modeling. And if you know, Tony Robbins, who's become uh, like the most famous coach and actually uh, popularized the term coaching in business, in sports, investors, all kinds of people that seem to have hit a wall. He coached them so that they could break through to the next level. And um, I was listening to a documentary where they show people like Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, of how they, when, when he started, he was modeling after Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. Then I was listening to Justin Timberlake in an interview who was modeling after Michael Jackson. And after Paul McCartney, he, he studied like 
oh, man, what are these incredible entertainers and performers? What do they do so that they're at the top of their game? He carefully studied them. And then I was, I was uh, listening about um, the Chinese uh, diving team, for Olympic diving in the pool. They didn't have a strong team at all. And then they sent spies to study the uh, U.S. Olympic team. And they studied every single little detail, how they, they, how they did everything. And they came back and for a few years, practiced everything 16 hours a day, seven days a week. And then at the next Olympics, they were contending for the gold medal because they imitated, they identified people that were more advanced uh, than they were, and they started implementing that. So modeling has several steps. The first one is be able to visualize like these divers, right? Was the, the first step was to believe that you could actually achieve that. The next, next one was imitate that which you visualize, that, that which you observe in someone else, you visualize it, you imitate it, and then you set up a goal. So once you get some coaching, then treasure that advice because it's something that you cannot see. Perhaps maybe, maybe admit that there are things you may not know and then have them help you implement it. Yeah, that just makes me think, I mean, how often we we put time and energy into so many things and we neglect our marriage. You know, we neglect reading a book, going to a marriage conference. There's a lot that we could do proactively to invest in our marriage and our relationship to grow. And we didn't be, we, you didn't get to the place where you are overnight. There have been little choices that you've been making, you know, and, and you can change. <laughs> and sometimes it looks too big, but start making little changes. It's gonna be little by little progress. Mm -hmm. Like coach yourself at night, reflect, okay, what did I say? What did I do? And how did that affect the other person? What could I change? What could mm -hmm. I do differently? I think sometimes we don't, we don't make the, we don't, we don't, we know there's a problem and we don't like it, but we aren't focused on, on, a solution yeah if you go to our website one of our websites um win their heart.com win their heart win their heart <laughs> uh there's a section uh, in the middle on the top on their on their materials uh, a section called heart to heart and it's a technique we learned from some friends about how to solve conflicts conflict resolution in that technique there's a list of 10 questions where when you have a conflict Here's the problem when you have a conflict. When she starts telling me that the, the problem she has, how, how she feels about something I'm doing or saying or thinking, while she's telling me that, I started thinking about another problem in my head, which is the problem I have with what she says to me. So guess what happens when you try to solve a conflict? I start listening and then I go, oh yeah, you think that's hard? Well, let me tell you how I feel. And then you try to solve two conflicts at once. Impossible. So this technique is actually isolating one at a time. There are certain rules, like if I'm the one who's gonna ask her the questions first, my rules are no blaming, explaining, or complaining. She, I can only paraphrase what I hear her say. We're not gonna get into that right now, we don't have the time, but we'll get into it in, in the future. But that gives me a limitation, a parameter for me to be able to listen to her, allow her to, to find out what's really bothering her, and for me to empathize with her. When I heard about this technique for the first time, I thought, this is ridiculous. Who thought of this? This is so stupid. But then we started trying it. And then I thought, man, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. When you have a problem with somebody, you have a problem in your marriage right now, seems unsolvable. And this, there's a dear friend of ours who's um, sharing with us about how she feels that her situation is unsolvable. And I actually told her, I don't think it's, it's unsolvable. It's actually, it's not easy, but it's very simple. You just have a huge blind spot and you need somebody to help you do it. So what I'm going with this with the conflict resolution is we've helped people, with, we have helped couples go through this conflict resolution. And it's really easy for us because when they say mean things to the other person, they didn't say it to me. <laughs> so I can be completely objective about it. Guess what? For you, you can't be. You need somebody to come from a different perspective and show you something you don't see. In one last example I, I read about is Tony Robbins. He was like a 24 year old guy and he went and talked to the military to offer them his services for coaching. 
in the shooting um, school and he told him, I've studied the shooting technique in your school that you have. I can cut your time in half and double your effectiveness in shooting. They're like, what? Don't pay me. If it doesn't work, don't pay me. And he started, most, most of the shooting started by shooting far away. And a lot of there was a lot of failure. He changed it. He realized that one thing that great shooters did in the Olympics and military was that they were able to visualize almost as if, if you have a, a, a target far away, 100 meters, you, they actually brought it as if it was like right in front of them. So he changed the technique to where they started shooting four feet away. Guess what? Boom, bullseye, bullseye. They started pushing it far back until he completely transformed their shooting technique. So maybe you need coaching because somebody will show you something that you have never even thought of, but that might be a revolutionary in your situation. Sorry, go ahead. No, just want to leave you with something practical. And that is when I was looking at my notes, talking about how we need to communicate the, val our, the value that our spouse has for us. And that's something I know that is really like what my heart longs for. I want to know that I have a place in Cesar's life that no one else occupies, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, think about that this week. You know, how can you communicate that to your spouse that you have a place in my life that no one else will ever occupy? Mm -hmm. You're valuable to me. That's good. Well, guys, thank you so much for logging in. Um, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We're going to repost this if you see this. Uh, don't worry about it. We have it recorded in its entirety in all those three channels. And you can uh, go uh, follow CesarandPam.com. And we want to help you grow your business and achieve your dreams without having to sell your soul, your family, or your health in the process. Thank you again for logging in with Cesar and Pam. You can live the life you dreamed, a life of freedom. See ya.